All right, welcome back to part four of this video series. In our last videos, parts one, two, and three, I talked about the ILO interface, updating firmware, um, configuring RAID, using the diagnostic tools, and I also mentioned that I added new memory and four new hard drives. So today we are going to complete the additional storage and VMware ESXi. So our last video we used the RAID configuration tool. We added drives five, six, and seven and eight. Five, six, seven, and eight here on the screen. And we configured it as RAID 5. So now currently the RAID controller is presenting the uh, LUN L U N to VMware ESXi on this server. Uh, let's go over here and take a look on the web client here. So dot four is the second server where we added the memory and the hard drives. And currently we have one data store as shown here under the hardware. And if we go over here to manage, we can see our first LUN1 of 1.64 terabytes is already attached in use. Uh, that is described here. If you look at the last two numbers, uh, L1 is LUN1. And this third one here is LUN2, which is the drives 5, 6, 7, and 8 that we added. Uh, VMware scanned for devices during boot up and did not have to discover anything. It was automatically discovered. And these are four 600 gig drives, so 2.4 terabytes. And we created RAID 5, so we lost a little space there. So now we have 1.6 terabytes for our new data store. So we'll go ahead and add the data store here. We'll go to Actions, and we'll go to Storage, and we'll do New Data, new data Store. And it's a simple wizard. This is going to be a VMware file system. Uh, we're not doing network file system, and we're not doing vVolume for virtual volumes data stores. So we're going to do VMFS, click Next. As you can see, it's already found here. LUN2, capacity 1.64 terabytes. I'm going to call this DC2, Data Store 2. I already have Data Store 1. And we'll call this prod for now. And once you decide on the name, go ahead and click next after you type in the name. And then now select your LUN for this data store. And click next. And if you'd like, you can partition the data store into smaller partitions, but I'm going to go ahead and leave mine at the full 1.6 terabytes. Use all available options or partitions and you can select configuration. Go ahead and click next. And it gives you a summary ready to complete. Name, type, the size, device, or disk LUN, SCSI drives, uh, GPT format, and VMFS version 5. And down at the bottom here, it'll show the status of it. So it's created the VMware data store image. And if we go back to the settings here, sorry, the summary under the hardware tab, and you still see it says one data store. If we go ahead and refresh this page. It now shows two data stores and zero clusters, I'm not using clustering here. 
So if you click the two here on the data store, it'll actually take you to the data store. So here is data store one and data store two. And the thing to remember is you may think, hey, I can add more storage and improve increase my uh, size of LUN 1 here. Well, it's already presented as LUN 1 and it cannot be changed. As far as I know, you may know more advanced options, but I'm not a VMware expert. I just created LUN 2 for data store 2 and I'll just move files over or delete stuff that I don't need. I uh, still have 300 gigs free on data store 1, but it's not a concern here. Um, you don't want to go use all the space up and you can't access the VMware client and you have to go in there as root to the CLI and move files away. Uh, so you can see here it's always been giving me alarms on the right data store 1 Data store usage is full. There's a, an alert for a, a threshold, probably 500 gigs or so on here. So you can acknowledge it, reset it to green, but it's going to continue to keep coming back until you reduce the storage or the files in the storage. So that's covers uh, adding storage to VMware. And this virtual lab is centered around two HP DL380 G7 servers, both running VMware ESXi with vSphere web client running on the server too. And the next few videos we'll talk about the architecture of the virtual lab and we'll move on up to the OS level. And we'll dig deeper in the syslog and smart connectors, etc. Thanks for watching.